Leighton, what a terrific way to, to start the Masters season. I mean, that was quite some victory against the guy as talented as Isner, wasn't it? Yeah, it's obviously uh, always a tough matchup, you know, especially in these conditions. He made the final and obviously beat Djokovic here last year. So, um, you know, bouncy court out there as well. The ball flying through the air, so it's not easy to return his serve. Um, and that's obviously his biggest weapon out there. I just tried to get as many back as possible and hang in the points. Yeah, I mean, to, to lose a first set as tight as that, I mean, it must have taken the, you know, a real, real sort of intensity to recover that after that first set. Yeah, it was frustrating losing it because it really could have gone either way. I uh, had a, a love 30 game midway through the um, through the first set and couldn't quite get an opportunity to break. Um, and then the tie break, you know, it was up and down a little bit. There was momentum swings and uh, yeah, I was proud of the way I was able to dig deep early in that second set and get up that break and then obviously hold it out uh, throughout the second set. And, and the third set, we both had small opportunities early and, uh, you know, I just hung deep there and, and ended up uh, digging it out. Yeah, as you say, it's all about momentum swings, and I think in that yeah, in that third set particularly, there's a couple of really big points, weren't there, against serve, and they, they, I don't know, psychologically that, you know, to me, did seem to be the difference in that third set. Yeah, absolutely. You don't get a lot of opportunities, obviously, to break such a big server out there, so you've really got to stand up to the plate and take your chances when they come. Um, but on the other hand, you know, I didn't lose serve for three sets out there today, so I felt like I, you know, had probably the better of the opportunities. Uh, would have been disappointing to have lost, um, but, you know, that's the way it goes. Again, against the big servers, there's only, you know, one or two chances. Yeah, and he's a big server, and he's obviously, uh, you know, a young guy as well. I mean, as you get a little bit older, how, how much tougher is it to, you know, dig that deep and, and come through against against guys like Isner? Um, yeah, for me, I'm so competitive anyway, so it's not, not that hard. You know, every time I step on the court, I want to win, give 100% every time. So, uh, you know, playing on centre court as well against a, a quality opponent, that's that's why I'm still out of here playing. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Stanislav's next... Um, you beat him six years ago. It's a long time ago now. The last Simon Hardman. How do you see that matchup? Yeah, it is, yeah, it is a long time ago. So I won't read too much into that. He obviously had a had a great Australian Open where he pushed over uh, Novak Djokovic all the way um, there. So you know it's going to be a tough match. He's obviously such a good ball striker from both sides, forehand and backhand, and and really a, an aggressive baseline player. And yeah, you know, he's got a, uh, a probably underrated first serve as well. You mm. know, really hard first serve and hits his spots well. Yeah, I mean obviously. Strange day in a way, a couple of big names out already. I mean, you won this event what, a decade ago now, but I mean, realistically, how far do you think you can go? Oh, I'll just take one match at a time at the moment, see what happens. Every every match gets tougher, um, and obviously I just worry about Rurinka yeah. in a couple of days' time.